Cynthia is incredibly strong, but a lot of her best Pokemon don't exist in Paldia. So I wondered, if Cynthia began her journey in Paldia, could she still become a champion? To find out, I'll be playing Pokemon Scarlet as Cynthia. This means using only Cynthia's Pokemon and their pre-evolutions. Plus, to make things way harder, I'm adding a ton of extra rules on top. With such a small selection of Pokemon and so many rules, could Cynthia beat all of Pokemon Scarlet? Well, let's find out. We load in as Cynthia, and ugh, I hate this uniform. Needs way more black to suit Cynthia's goth girl emo vibe. We then get to pick our starter, but there's a problem. Wow, I hate all of these. So Cynthia, what'll it be? Uh, I'll take Gibble. No, no, sweetie, you can pick from either. I said, get me a Gibble. Oh God, you're scary. Fine, take the Gibble, just don't hurt me. Now we had our Gibble. It's only fitting that this little guy is our starter since it was Cynthia's real starter and also her ace Pokemon. We also meet Nimona and apparently she's a champion, but I show her the power of a real champion as Gibble mercilessly crushes her Fue Coco with Sam. Tomb. Cynthia doesn't own many Pokemon in Paldia, but let me know in the comments which of them is your favorite. After finding Coridon collapsed on the beach, we force feed it some bacon flavored Lechonk hair, bringing it back to life immediately. Ooh, so that's the legendary Pokemon of Paldia. Let me guess, does it alter time? Nope. Bend space? Not even close. Well, what does it do? Uh, if you give it some herbs, it can jump real big. Ah. Oh. Cool, I guess. Now we can explore Paldia a little bit and, oh my God, ice cream. Cynthia absolutely loves ice cream. So you better believe I spent all my cash literally trying every single flavor. Perfect, money well spent. One like equals one ice cream for Cynthia. That ice cream definitely gave me some luck because right after I found this. A shiny Pichu. So of course, I did what anyone would do and brutally murdered that sparkling abomination. Cynthia doesn't have a Pichu, so neither can I. F's in the chat for sparkly Pichu. I was really devastated to lose a shiny like that. So to lift my spirits, I went home and played the sponsor of this video, Raid Shadow Legends. Listen, I know you. You like Pokemon, so you like collecting creatures and battling with them. But guess what? You can do all that and more in Raid. The Kingdom of Teleria has nearly 700 unique champions for you to collect. There are some awesome champions here, like Astralon, literally a dual wielding sword angel. With those champions, there's plenty of action. You can do a full campaign, battle other players, or even take part in big boss fights. There's so much to do and the action never stops. But I really like the strategy involved. Just like Pokemon, you have to build a squad that complements each other. It's a lot of fun learning new mechanics, trying out new builds, and testing them against the next big boss fight. And now is a great time to get started with Raid, because there's a special event where new and existing players can get a champion based off of Ronda Rousey for free just by logging in. Play Raid for seven days between now and February 20, and you'll add Ronda to your roster. And to help level up your Ronda, use the promo code RAIDRONDA. You'll get an XP boost, some silver, and five energy refills. On top of that, Amazon Prime members can also get some exclusive rewards right now. So download Raid for free on Android or iOS, and if you use my link or scan the QR code right here, new players will get a free starter pack worth $30. It includes an awesome champion, Tyrell, and all this bonus loot. But these rewards will appear here in your inbox for the next 30 days only. So don't wait, download Raid Shadow Legends now, and I'll see you in Teleria. After continuing to spin the local electric mice population like Beyblades, Gibble reached level 10, and it was time to remind Nimona how a real champion operates. A sand tomb and tackle take care of Fue Coco no problem. Nimona then sends out Pormi and gives a little monologue about strategy before trying to thundershock my ground type. Yeah, please tell me more about your great strategies. A sand tomb picks up the KO and we'd once again dominated the imposter champion. Now we've reached Misagoza where of course Cynthia ate more ice cream and got rid of the lame looking hat. Nimona gives us a terror orb but I won't be using it in this challenge. Challenge. Back in my day, we didn't need to rely on strange gimmicks. Once we enter school, Professor Sada asks us to keep the legendary Coridon. Uh, okay, but are you sure it doesn't bend time or space? Kid, it's literally just a bicycle. Ugh. Fine. Now we're clear to explore and begin our conquest of the Paldia region. And since Gibble is looking kinda lonely, 
it's time to get our first encounter. By backtracking into the South Province, with a little backwards jumping, we can find an Eevee, the pre-evolution of Cynthia's Glaceon. This thing nearly killed me and kept breaking out of the ball, but we caught it just in time. Our team size had doubled, and more importantly, now Gibble had a friend. After a charge through the fields, we'd made it to Cortondo for our first gym. All right, Olive, I don't like you, and you don't like me, but I'm gonna get you home. With the olives rolled, we were ready to take on the first gym leader, Katie. We're at a big disadvantage here because we only have two Pokemon, whereas Katie has three. Not only are we outnumbered, but due to the rules of this challenge, I can't start the fight with any Pokemon leveled higher than her ace. So despite it being the first gym, this was going to be tough. I lead with my baby shark and Katie's nimble immediately hits me with struggle bug. With my special attack lowered, dragon breath barely does anything. So I switch to tackles and while I am able to outlast Nimble, Gibble is brought to below half HP in the process. This means I can only survive for two turns before Katie's Tarantula culls my shark. This leaves only Eevee to deal with both remaining Pokemon. While Eevee was able to finish Tarantula, it stood no chance against Teddy Ursa, who quickly crushes my last Pokemon. Yep, the Sinnoh champ just lost to the first Paldean gym leader. I tried rematching Katie with Eevee out front, but the end result was the exact same. She rolled me like a delicious Olive. I didn't expect the challenge to be this hard so early on. If Cynthia can't even crush a few tiny bugs, how on earth would we be able to conquer the toughest trainers in Paldia? For now, I needed a new approach with Katie. So I went exploring, and after an eternity, I found the answer, Dragon Claw. This powerful move would turn my baby shark into a deadly great white. I also taught Eevee the move Swift to take advantage of its modest nature. With an upgraded team, I stepped up to Katie for a third time, and this was much smoother. Gibble hits like a tank now, two-shotting both Nimble and Tarantula. But I can only land one Dragon Claw onto Teddy Ursa before Gibble falls, leaving it all up to Eevee. A Swift isn't enough to KO the Teddy, and... Eevee survives a Fury Cutter before one last Swift just finishes Teddy Ursa, earning us an incredibly difficult first badge. How did it all go at the gym? Oh, it was totally easy. As if a bug gym would ever be hard. Beat it on my very first try. With that taken care of, now it was time for Cynthia to hunt her next Pokemon. And soon enough, I found... Wait, another shiny? I love Toxtricity's shiny, so this is an awesome find. But as much as it pains me, Cynthia never had one. So we send this shiny Toxel to the Shadow Realm. Why do I only find shinies when I can't catch them? After drying my tears, eventually I found found the Pokemon I actually had in mind, Riolu. This adorable little guy is going to be vital to Cynthia's team, but since it's already at the level cap, I'll be boxing it for now. Regardless, Riolu is awesome to have. Our first badge was insanely tough, but now it's time to take on the Crab King. Blorf is Cynthia's first Titan, and I was a little worried since I've only got these two with me. But I had a plan. See, Clorf is a physical attacker, so I send out Eevee and spam Baby Doll Eyes. This nerfs Clorf's attack into the ground. Even though Eevee goes down, from here, a Sand Tomb from Gibble, followed by a few Dragon Claws, are enough to crush that crab. Arvid and I secure some Dank Herba Mystica, which he turns into sandwiches. I feed mine to Coridon, powering him up, kinda like how Cynthia gets powered up by ice cream. Same thing. With the first Titan conquered, Cynthia's next stop is Artisan Town, where the second gym awaits. Oh, look at these two lovebirds on a hot day. I will never get tired of seeing this gang of stuttery sun flora. While preparing for the gym, Eevee tried to evolve, but don't you even think about it until I get my hands on an ice stone. Now it was time to take on Brassius, the grass leader. And unlike the last gym, now we have enough Pokemon to make him even three on three. Brassius opens up with Petalil, and this thing is so annoying. It instantly tucks Eevee to bed with Sleep Powder, and then spams Mega Drain to heal back the little damage that I can deal. Once Eevee wakes up, I land a few Swifts, but my fluffy little fox goes down. Now it was Gibble's turn, and luckily, Petalil is just weak enough for a single Dragon Claw to even the score. Brassius goes with Smoliv next, and it's pretty pathetic. Gibble gobbles it up very quickly. Although, what What's not pathetic is Brassius' final Pokemon, Sudowoodo. This is where things go south because Sudowoodo is tough, especially after it terastalizes. I try to land a Sand Tomb, but Gibble misses 
and is then hit by a huge trailblaze. Since this also gives Sudowoodo a speed boost, I'm outsped on the next turn, and Gibble goes down. We were in a rough spot. Sudowoodo had boosted stats and was still at full health, while we only had Riolu. Trailblaze almost crushes me in one shot, and we were about to lose once again. Except I had a plan, because Riolu knows the move counter, which takes all the physical damage I just took and deals double back to my opponent. This cripples Sudowoodo. It does live on one HP thanks to Sturdy, and it is faster than Riolu. However, a priority quick attack on the next turn allows Riolu to move first, finishing Sudowoodo off just in time. That was an insane clutch, and I'd expect nothing less from the almighty Sinnoh champ two badges down. So far, this challenge has not been easy, and we had plenty of difficult fights ahead of us. Despite nearly being flattened by a boulder, Cynthia cleaned up the next Titan without too much trouble. But that's where the good times stop, because now we're up against our first Team Star Raid, and that means we have to beat Giacomo, the Dark-type user. Like an Olive, we'd been on a roll lately, so I was feeling pretty confident. What a fool I was. His Pornyard lead isn't too threatening. I have to tank a Metal Claw before firing off a super effective Bulldoze. While this doesn't kill, it does lower Pornyard's speed. Now my Gibble is faster, and one more Bulldoze on the next turn finishes it off. Smooth so far, but now Giacomo sends in his big dark car. This thing is the devil. My Gibble can barely touch it before falling to Snarl. Despite throwing some sand at it, the Starmobile still lands its attacks, crushing Eevee and Riolu while still basically at full health. Yet another loss for the Sinnoh champ. But with a new strategy and a heart full of determination, I stepped up to Giacomo again and still lost. This time it was even worse. With another L to hold, I knew we needed a drastic boost if we wanted to stand a chance against this boss. After some pondering, the answer was clear. What we needed to beat Giacomo was... Hygiene. After giving Riolu a bath and taking it for a jog, its friendship was maxed out, allowing it to evolve into a deadly Lucario. This gives it a huge stat boost, as well as some extra moves. Now that Cynthia had Lucario, she was back to being a dominant demon, because Lucario absolutely tore Giacomo to pieces. With a string of Aura Spheres, Lucario was able to decimate his Dark Types in no time at all. That's more like it. After some adventuring, we have made it to the town of Lavincia, where my first priority is eating a a ton more ice cream. And with that delicious power-up, it's no surprise that Nimona never stood a chance when she challenged Cynthia to a battle. Just like when Cynthia battled Paul for the first time, my shark boy went wild, sweeping through her entire team with an onslaught of bulldozers. Wow, you battle like someone with more than two badges. Hmm, I wonder why that is. Next, we appeared on Iono's livestream and farmed some subscriptions from all the simpias for Cynthia across the world. Once that was done, we can take on the next gym leader. But Iono Mono is tough. She outnumbers us with four Pokemon, and her Miss Magius has no weaknesses once it terrestrializes. So my team would need a boost if we wanted any chance of taking her on. Fortunately, when Gibble reaches level 24, it finally evolves into Gabite, Garchomp's awkward teenager stage. With an upgraded Ground Dragon in our squad, I stepped up to face Iono. She leads with a goofy-looking Wattrel, who isn't too scary. I eat a Pluck before two Dragon Claws take it down. Next is a Luxio that immediately lowers my attack with Intimidate. Regardless, I stay in with Gabite, and a big bulldoze just isn't enough for the KO. Annoyingly, I get crit by Bite before finishing Luxio with another bulldoze. This brings out Belly Bolt, who tanks my bulldoze incredibly easy. With Gabite on the brink of death, I switch into Eevee, who almost dies instantly. But by bringing Gabite back with its attack restored, I just survive a Water Gun on 1 HP, before finishing Belly Bolt with a final Dragon Claw. The battle had been going really well so far, and this is where it stopped going really well, because Miss Magius instantly finishes off Gabite, leaving me with only Lucario. But after Miss Magius landed a Confuse Ray, Lucario hit himself like an idiot before dying to Hex. Yep, we lost again. But I believed in our team, so I went right back for another try. Just like last time, Watchrule goes down no problem. However, this time, when Luxio intimidates my Gabite, I immediately switch into Lucario. Since Luxio only knows Bite and Spark, I know it wants to spark my Lucario. And this lets me bring Gabite back onto the field without taking any damage. The switching restored Gabite's attack stat, so this time, it only takes one Bulldoze to finish off Luxio. On top of that, this also lets me me quickly take out Belly Bolt in only two shots. We were in a much better spot this time around. 
Gabite can hit Miss Magius with a dragon claw before falling, bringing out our adorable Eevee. Eevee slowly chipped away, bringing Miss Magius into low HP just as it went down. Once again, we were down to only Lucario. And once again, it hit itself in confusion and died to a boosted hex. Stop hitting yourself. Why are you like this? <sighs> Ah, back for more, are we? Shut up! I can't help it that RNG Jesus hates me! By attempt 3, finally some luck went my way. The start of the fight was the same, with Gabite cleaning up the first three Pokemon. Then, against Miss Magius, Gabite was confused, but actually landed a hit. Are you watching this? Take notes. Like the Chad Ace Pokemon that it is, Gabite just survived a hex before landing yet another Dragon Claw. With Miss Magius on the brink of death, our little Eevee can deal the final blow with Quick Attack. That gives us our third badge, but this challenge had been way harder than I expected. I seriously started to doubt whether we'd actually stand a chance against the late game super bosses. Regardless, I pressed on, and soon I stumbled across Cynthia's next Pokemon, Rufflet. It's not one of her iconic Pokemon, but she did use Braviary in black and white. I'm sorry, Orthworm. Forgive me for what I'm about to do. After slaying Orthworm, again, rip, we conquered the next team starbase by unleashing my Gabite onto Mela's fire types. Our next stop is the town of Cascarafa, where a local shop sells evolution stones. Oh, cool. They've got all the evolution stones, except the one I need. Awesome. The next gym is here, but the leader just runs away. Eventually, we catch up to the single-browed big man, clearing us to take him on back at the gym. But before that, down on the beach, we can find Cynthia's next Pokemon, Shellos, a slimy, pretty pink slug. And straight away, we can evolve it into Gastrodon, a slimier, prettier, pinker slug. I also found some Tynamo here, but they're way too overleveled, so I'll leave them be for now. Now it was gym time, and for the first time in this challenge, we actually have more Pokemon than the gym leader. Since my rules only let me bring an equal number of Pokemon, I had to bench Eevee and Rufflet, leaving us with these heroes to tackle the big wet man and his water types. Kofu leads with Veluza, so I go with Gabite. Two super effective bites, put it on the brink of death before it dies to damage from the overworld sandstorm. Next up is Wug Trio, and Gabite can just survive a second headbutt before finishing the cursed worms with Dragon Claw. But Kofu's real heavy hitter is Crabominable. I'm expecting a big Terra Water move, so switch into our brand new Gastrodon. Kofu tries to Crab Hammer, but I hit him with the Uno Reverse card. Gastrodon's Storm Drain ability soaks it up while also boosting my special attack. With this buff, Gastrodon can crush that crab with a few mud shots, giving Cynthia a clean sweep for our fourth badge. After how rough our last gym was, I'm just glad to win on the first try. With some wins under our belt, we had some big momentum. And it didn't stop there, because our next objective is the Poison Team Starbase. With a deadly steel type and two ground types in our team, you can probably guess how this went. Oh no, a big scary car! Pathetic. Gastrodon, send it to the scrap heap. We then learn that all of Team Star are victims of bullying. But I mean, like Cynthia would care. She's been bullying kids and crushing their dreams since 2006. After making our way to Medali, we find the next gym. More importantly, we also find a ton of ice cream. The challenge this time around has us try to figure out the secret signature dish of a restaurant. Now tell me, what will you be ordering? Uh, is the secret dish ice cream? Uh, no, of course not. Well, damn it, it should be. Once we give the correct order, we're clear to take on Larry and his normies. At the very least, I think Cynthia would respect his all black attire. I brought the same Pokemon as last time and led with Gastrodon. Unfortunately, my slug can only land two water pulses before being put to bed. And while Gastrodon is sleeping, Kamala takes it out with some big body slams. We were already behind, but Gabite can quickly even the score with a Dragon Claw. This brings out to Dunsparce, who paralyzes me with glare. As is tradition, my luck is terrible and Gabite is fully paralyzed on the next turn. This means I can only land one Dragon Claw before Gabite falls to a Hyper Drill. Fortunately, this means that Dunsparce is in range for one Aura Sphere to quickly finish it off. It was down to a 1v1 with Lucario versus Terra Star Raptor. It outspeeds me, and an Aerial Ace does just less than half before my Aura Sphere barely falls short of getting the KO. If Star Raptor crits here, I lose, but I can avoid that with a priority Vacuum Wave, allowing Lucario to move first and finish Star Raptor. That's our fifth badge, and while we struggled a lot 
with those early gems, now our team was really rolling. After the battle, we meet Gita, who's the top champion of Paldia. So I guess she's kind of like Cynthia, just worse and less stylish. Wait, Nimona, you still want to battle me? Even after I've been stepping on you this entire time? We're forced to battle, and this is where I unleashed my slug. Like the absolute king that it is, Gastrodon was able to solo Nimona's Lycanroc, Gumi, and Pormo. It did finally go down to Skeledurge, but Gabite cleans up that croc shortly after, handing Nimona yet another fat L. <laughs> Now leave me alone. We can head to the next gym right away. However, at this point, we can get some serious upgrades to our roster. First of all, in this cave, I was able to find an ice stone. This means that our Eevee, who's been with us since basically the very start, can finally evolve into Cynthia's Glaceon. It's an ice type and Cynthia loves ice cream. What a perfect match. We're not done yet though, because by taking a swim in the ocean, we find a cute little Tynamo. But this little guy is about to undergo a growth spurt. After gaining one level, it evolves into an electric and then with a thunderstone it instantly becomes electros another pokemon from cynthia's black and white team for the first time we had a full team and our cynthia decks was starting to fill up but like i said cynthia doesn't have many pokemon in this game so we only had one more available encounter but we're not ready for that yet for now, we're chasing our next gym badge. After a hike through the snow, we reach Montenevera. It's a spooky town, and at the gym, Jacques offers us an egg in this trying time. For this gym, Cynthia has to go big brain mode because Rhyme and her ghost types only deal in double battles. This was going to be a tough one, so after assembling my squad, I stepped up to the MC of RIP. Rhyme makes this kid burst into tears, which is pretty much exactly what Cynthia does to all the 10-year-olds in Sinnoh who make it to the Pokemon League. Rhyme leads with a Mimikyu and Bennett, and I go with Gabite, as well as debut our new Electros. Now, these two are an insane combo, because Electros can discharge everyone on the field, but Garchomp is immune to electric attacks. On the other hand, Garchomp can earthquake everyone, but Electros is immune thanks to its levitate ability. With this incredible combo, on turn one, we take out Bennett, as well as bring Mimikyu to below half HP. However, Gabite was crippled by an icy wind in the process, so a priority Shadow Sneak on the next turn finishes it off. But this is followed by another discharge from Electros, which fries Mimikyu into the ground. I sent in Glaceon next, and Rhyme was down to her last two Pokemon. Her Teratoxtricity hits a Hyper Voice, but both of my Pokemon survive before an icy wind, as well as a super effective Crunch, are enough to immediately destroy her ace. A Freeze Dry on the following turn from our new Glaceon is enough to crush Houndstone, giving us badge number six. Our team was really on a roll now, so without much trouble, Cynthia was able to clean up both the next Titan, as well as the seventh gym leader, Chula. This meant we only had one more badge to collect. With the new level cap, our ace finally evolved into Cynthia's signature Pokemon, Garchomp. What an absolute chad. <sighs> Our little baby shark is all grown up. Now, this last gym is a problem. Grusha uses ice types, which absolutely cripple my Garchomp and Rufflet. So I decided to bench those, leaving us with these four to take on the gym. I thought this gym was going to be our hardest yet. Little did I know, our slug had other plans. Gastrodon is immediately hit for big damage by Blizzard before a quad effective ancient power nearly KOs Frostmoth. Annoyingly, on the next turn, Frostmoth sets up a tailwind as I finish it off with one more ancient power. But then... Yep, we got an Omni Boost from Ancient Power. I really want to stall out the Tailwind, so spam Recover for the next few turns. Once the Tailwind is gone, Gastrodon outspeeds Bear Tick before taking it out with a second Ancient Power. Are you kidding me? Another one? All my bad luck from earlier in the run was starting to turn around. Now my slug was an absolute demon. And from here, Grusha stood no chance as it easily swept up the last of his Pokemon. That was insanely lucky, but I'll take it. Most impressive, Cynthia. A shining display of talent. Uh, sure. Let's call it that. Now we can go and find Cynthia's final Pokemon, Spiritomb. Some say it contains the souls of all of Cynthia's victims. After catching the spooky rock, we were so close to finishing our Cynthia decks. I decided decided to take on the final titan next, but it's a giant whale and we have an electric eel. It's really not too hard to guess how this one went down. The third phase, Tatsugiri, was a little trickier, but our Electros still managed to take care of business. What's not so simple is the next team star raid. There are two raids left, but this one is against a fairy type user. This is a problem because two of my best Pokemon are weak to fairy and none of them resist it. Despite that, we do have a steel type in Lucario, who Cynthia's gonna have to rely on to basically carry this fight against 
Ghost or Taiga. Talk about underwhelming, I was expecting someone a little more beefed up. Oh, you're gonna regret that, kid. Lucario lands a Meteor Mash onto Azumarill for about 40% damage, but then I'm hit by Charm. With my attack lowered, I have to get Lucario out of there, so switch into Electros. We take huge damage, but my eel hangs on just long enough to land a Charge Beam, taking out Pika Blue. Wigglytuff immediately evens the score, but this lets me bring Lucario back out. And with a super effective Meteor Mash, we crush the guild leader while also getting a crucial attack boost. Have a taste of this slick move. Impressive. Now it's my turn. Last is Revivroom, and another Meteor Mash deals enormous damage. I only needed to land one more attack for the win. However, now Lucario was confused. All right, Lucario, this is your moment for redemption. I know you can do this. I believe in... You stupid furry! Why are you like this? Lucario fell, quickly followed by Garchomp and our Spiritomb. Our team was on the ropes, but with the Starmobile literally down to one pixel of health, Glaceon landed one final freeze dry to give us the win over Ortega. Don't feel too bad, bullying kids is Cynthia's forte. With only one team starbase left on the map, I immediately charged to our next destination. Once there, our rufflet finally evolved into a braviary. Smells like freedom, baby. Our new patriotic bird is going to come in very handy because the next team star boss is Eri, a fighting type user, and honestly, she can be one of the hardest fights in the the entire game. I lead with our Freedom Bird, and a Poison Jab from Toxicroak does big damage. However, I return Serve with Acrobatics, a flying move that does huge damage since I'm not holding any items. This wipes Toxicroak off the map as Eri goes into Annihilate. I know that it's faster than me, but thankfully, Braviary just survives a close combat. This lets me set up Tailwind, doubling my speed for 5 turns. Now I'm faster, so another Acrobatics can clean up Annihilate as well as decimate the incoming Persimian. However, unlike the Pokemon so far, Lucario isn't weak to flying. But I've prepared for this with a superpower from Braviary crushing Lucario in just one shot. Braviary could then deal huge damage to Revivroom before finally falling. He did good though. What a true American hero. Since my spooky Spiritomb is immune to fighting, it was able to just outlast Revivroom with a few psychics finishing the job. Just like that, Cynthia had conquered the final team starbase. Next we made up with Arvin because apparently we needed Arvin's help to unlock this little door. But I'm pretty sure my Garchomp could rip right through that. After talking to Sada and learning all about Arvin's mummy issues, we have to take him on in battle. But this is not easy because we're significantly underleveled. To try and get around this, I have Lucario set up a Swords Dance before just tanking an Earthquake. But with my attack boost, on the next turn, a Drain Punch can crush the Chipmunk while recovering back most of my health. Next is a Deadly Scovillain, who I expect to take out in one shot, but fell just short. And Lucario was melted down by a Fire Blast. Garchomp could quickly finish it off, off, as well as do big damage to Toad's Cruel. However, then I was put to sleep by Spore, and Garchomp just refused to wake up. Once Garchomp finally decides to get out of bed, another Dragon Claw can finish Tentacruel's cousin. But thanks to those sleeping turns, Garchomp is really low. So when Cloyster comes out, I immediately switch into Glaceon. My Icy Dog goes down quickly, but it got Cloyster low enough for Garchomp to come back in and clean up the job. Now it was a 4v2, and things were looking good. But this is where it all went downhill. After after landing a big earthquake onto Garganical, Garchomp falls to a body press. Gastrodon quickly got some revenge, but not before the giant golem set up stealth rocks. It was a 3v1, so this should be a pretty easy win, right? Well, I don't know what steroids Arvin was feeding his Mabastiff alongside those Herba Mystica, because this doggy went wild. Because a Terra Boosted Crunch absolutely crushed my Gastrodon, as well as Braviary. Now it was all up to Spiritomb. Except this thing also knows Play Rough, which annihilates Spiritomb. Just when I felt like we were unstoppable, we're hit by yet another loss. We were in the endgame now, and we'd be taking on full teams of powerful Pokemon. So I had to get serious. That last battle all fell apart when we lost Lucario to Scovillain. So the only change I made was give Lucario an extra move. The start of the fight then goes exactly the same against Greedon. Except when the spicy pepper emerges, I am immediately hit it with close combat for the KO. This made all the difference, as the rest of the fight was much smoother, and Cynthia was able to get some revenge on Arvin. Hmm, I'd say we need somebody with champion rank level skills. Uh, hello? You're looking at her? Back to the Team Star quest, and before we can take on the final super boss, we have to beat Director Clavel. Just like Arvin, he has a full team of diverse, powerful Pokemon, and on top of that, 
I'm still underleveled. Clavel's Orangaroo is annoying because it likes to use Yawn. To get around this, I lead with Electros and land a few crunches. But once I'm hit by Yawn, I use the following turn to Volt Switch, as this gets Electros out safely, saving it from taking a snooze. A Meteor Mash from Lucario can then finish the Guru, before close combat decimates Houndoom. Once Gyarados is out, I know it wants to Earthquake, so I can safely bring our Levitating Eel back out. Then, a quad effective Volt Switch fries Gyarados for the KO. From here, the rest of the fight is pretty straightforward, with our Patriot Bird finishing off Mouse with an Acrobatics. Clavel asks us to basically do his job for him, but that involves crushing a child, so I'm sure Cynthia would have no problem with it. So we confront the super boss of Team Star. Bow down before my overwhelming might. No, you bow down before the might of Lucario. Penny's Umbreon lead is hard countered by my furry, so we can safely set up three swords dancers to max my attack. Then with a drain punch, we decimate Umbreon, Flareon, and Vaporeon. Now we're set up to sweep, and the only thing that can stop me is... A critical hit thunder. Ugh. Regardless, Lucario put us in such a good spot that I don't have too much trouble cleaning up the rest of Penny's Pokemon. Uh, Mr. Clavel, I should be punished more heavily than the others, I think. Because of Operation Starfall? No, because I mercilessly gutted and stuffed an EV to make my backpack. Get the hell out of my school. With Arvin and Penny's storylines wrapped up, now only the Pokemon League stood before Cynthia. First, we have to take a test, and this is kinda tricky. What Pokemon did you pick to be your first partner? Uh, I don't see Baby Shark listed anywhere here. But once that's done, we're clear to take on the Elite Four. Rika's ground types are pretty straightforward. Glaceon can absolutely rip her team apart with an onslaught of freeze dries. With an assist from Braviary right at the end, we crushed the first E4 member. Poppy is a literal child, and if there's one thing that Cynthia's good at, it's crushing children. Leading with Garchomp, we immediately crush Copperaja with an earthquake. However, the Corviknight that follows is a much worse matchup for my shark. So I switch into Electros. I miss my first Thunder Wave and get absolutely clapped by a body press before my second Thunder Wave lands. Since I now outspeed Corviknight, I hit a super effective Volt Switch, which lets me pivot into Spiritomb. A Shadow Ball then finishes the Galarian Taxi. Bronzong is annoying to deal with, so I just curse it with Spiritomb. And from here, there's blood in the water as Garchomp decimates the rest of Poppy's toys with Earthquake. Larry's flying types are up next, but they get clapped by Cynthia's Pokemon pretty easily. Glaceon and Garchomp do a lot of the heavy lifting, with Electros finishing Flamingo for the win. Last up is Hassel's Dragons, and since Cynthia's ace is a dragon, this one's personal. Glaceon can immediately crush Noivern, but is quickly traded out. Now it's Lucario's time to shine. I live long enough to set up a Swords Dance, before a Drain Punch and Meteor Mash are enough to finish Haxorus. With its attack boosted, Lucario can cleanly take care of Dragalge, as well as the Flapple that follows. This leaves only Bax Calibur, who just survives a close combat before Lucario finally falls. However, this clears the way for Cynthia's Garchomp to come in and establish its dominance as the toughest dragon in Paldia. We beat Hassel so badly that he breaks down in tears. Cynthia had bullied her way through the Elite Four, but now it was Geeta's turn. Wait, you call yourself the top champion, but you don't even have your own room? They just stuck you on the roof. Where's all the cool lighting? You're pathetic. Shut up. The budget for my room was stolen by some kid with an EV backpack. Against Geeta's Aspartha, I lead with my Electros and take big damage from Illumina Crash, but paralyze it with Thunder Wave. But once in this run, I actually get some paralysis luck, allowing Electros to land a huge crunch before finishing the Psychic Chicken with a Volt Switch. This lets me bring out Lucario, and Geeta responds by sending in Avalug. Now I go for Swords Dance, as I know that I can live at least one body press. Uh, never mind. By going into Electros, this will bait Gita into using Body Press. So I Volt Switch as this deals big damage while also letting me pivot into Spiritomb, who isn't hit by the incoming attack. Then on the next turn, a Shadow Ball from our Ball of Spirits gets the KO. Cynthia did not show Gita any mercy. From here, Braviary crushed Go-Goat with Acrobatics, as well as King Gambit with a quite effective superpower. Once Garchomp crushes Veluza, it was a showdown between the ace Pokemon of both champions. But Garchomp is way too cool to be beaten by a floating rock. And with a few earthquakes, Cynthia had crushed the Paldian Pokemon League. But Cynthia wasn't done establishing her dominance just yet. Nimona calls us rivals, but I mean, 
mean, come on. Our battles have not been close throughout this whole run. You're hardly Cynthia's rival. We have a final showdown with the wannabe rival, but honestly, it was an absolute slaughter. Pneumonia's Pokemon never stood a chance, dismantling her team one by one. With Garchomp dealing the final blow onto Skeledurge, we bullied Nimona for the final time and only had one fight to go. Things had been going really smoothly so far, but that was about to change. To prepare for the final boss, Cynthia powered up by eating every single ice cream known to man. We then head into the Paldea Crater and, oh god, it's the Eevee murderer. <laughs> You sicken me. Ha! <laughs> Look at the stupid Raichu! After reaching the bottom of the crater, we confront Sada, who turns out to be an AI robot. I managed to harness the power of time travel. Pretty incredible, right? Eh, not really. I've literally met the god of time. To truly beat Pokemon Scarlet, Cynthia will have to defeat the AI Sada. Make no mistake, this is by far the hardest fight of the game, and to top it off, I'm going into this really underleveled. This would be Cynthia's biggest challenge yet. Sada leads with Slitherwing, which hits Braviary for decent damage with Lunge, also lowering my attack. However, a quad effective Acrobatics is still enough to take it down. This brings out Fluttermane, and I expect a Thunderbolt, so a switch into Gastrodon who is immune. We then trade blows back and forth, but this Fluttermane is so strong that it gets the best of our Slug. However, at this range, I can go into Spiritomb next, and a quick priority Shadow Sneak picks up the Revenge Kill. This brings out Screamtail, and this thing is a problem. Spiritomb can hit a Shadow Ball and Shadow Sneak for about half of its health before falling. My plan was to have Lucario finish it with Meteor Mash, but Screamtail hit a super effective Drain Punch. Not only does this destroy my Lucario, but it also healed Screamtail right back up. I just didn't have any answers for this Jiggly Demon. To make matters worse, my Braviary was hit by an Ice Punch and got frozen. I can't make this up. Screamtail ripped through Braviary and Garchomp. Electros did eventually get the KO, but by this point, it was too late and we had lost. Not only did we lose, we got destroyed. It wasn't even close. Honestly, I started to believe that Sada was just going to be too powerful for Cynthia. But damn it, the Sinnoh champ doesn't give up that easily. I tried again and again, but the losses kept on stacking up. Until now. I still lead Braviary and am immediately flinched by Zen Headbutt on turn one. Good start. I tank a lunge on the next turn, but here is where my strategy changes. Now I set up a Tailwind. So Braviary outspeeds on the next turn, and just like before, Acrobatics gets the KO. The difference is that now I outspeed Fluttermane, so Braviary can hit a huge Acrobatics before being shot out of the sky by Power Gem. Spiritomb can finish it off with Shadow Sneak, and the next few turns against Screamtail go the same as last time, with Spiritomb doing solid damage before falling. However, this time I still have my Slug. Gastrodon's bulk means it can survive the Pink Puff's attacks really well while also using Recover to keep me healthy. With two Earth Powers, Screamtail falls, and this attempt was going way better than the first. Next up is Sardis Brute Bonnet, and Gastrodon does not like grass. So I switch into Lucario, and since this Ancient Mushroom has a secondary Dark type, I can Swords Dance, just survive an Earth Power, and then hit a big Drain Punch to get the KO while also recovering health. Despite that, Lucario still falls to an Earth Power against Sandy Shocks. I then go back into Gastrodon, and by combining Earth Power with Recover, my Slug can crush the Ancient Magnet. This leaves only Roaring Moon, but it is a beast of a Pokemon. Its stats are insane, and it gets a plus one boost. Immediately, Gastrodon fell, and the situation was looking grim. I go into Electros next, and thankfully, my Eel just survives a Dragon Claw before landing a Thunder Wave. Despite that, Roaring Moon still outspeeds me, and a Dragon Claw takes me down. We had one Pokemon left, Cynthia's Garchomp. It was a showdown between two dragons. Unlike Electros, Garchomp outspeeds the paralyzed ancient Salamence, charging up an almighty Dragon Claw, and just falls short. Garchomp is absolutely dead to the incoming Booster Dragon Claw, but Roaring Moon was fully paralyzed. This means we can land one more Dragon Claw, giving us an insanely clutch win over Sada. It wasn't easy, but with that, Cynthia had conquered all of Pokemon Scarlet. Jump into this video next for more Pokemon content. Leave a like to fuel Cynthia's ice cream addiction, and an F in the comments for all those dead shinies. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.